after months of speculation, WBC and ring slash Lanio heavyweight champion of the world Tyson Fury takes on mandatory challenger and WBC interim champion Dillian White. This fight's got everything, a variety of skills, attributes, intangibles, two former friends on the come up in the sport of boxing who went their separate paths to God willingly meet at Wembley Stadium, London, UK on Saturday, April the 23rd, 2022. Hey, what's going on, Ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that kind of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're talking about five things to keep in mind going into Fury White. Let's get into it. Number one, Fury White rivalry. Train up, soccer, because you're getting annihilated, bomb. You can call me a dust on the gym sweep as much as you want, but calling me to my face is a different story. You know, I'll show you what a dust on the gym sweeper can do. I propose that we make me and Dylan White for the WBC Diamond Belt and not the interim belt. And I'll take care of Dylan White and I'll knock him out within six rounds. I accept the challenge. Thank you very much. He says one thing, then he does another thing. The facts are the facts. He called it on when the cameraman showed me he didn't want it. I can't wait to punch Dylan White's face right in, mate. I'm going to give him the best eye that he's ever had in his life, boy. If he steps to me, then, you know, I'll lay him up. You know, I'm not that, that guy, you know what I mean? I don't go around looking for trouble, but... Dylan White's a bitch. I want to see you. You've got to fight me anyway. Believe it or not, there was a time Tyson Fury and Dillian White were actual friends. Now, as we know, time reveals all things. And in recent years, both Dillian White and Tyson Fury have had quite the things to say about each other. Tyson's awkward, he's long, he's rangy. Some days he may outbox you here and there, but I've definitely put, I definitely laid him up before. I definitely put him on his, his, his bottom. Before. And what he did was he didn't turn up, and for not doing that, I've, he's already let me in his mind completely. So I'm living in that mind. I'm like a, a small, quiet voice in the back of a, a big, empty place. That's Dylan White's brain, empty. He's a bit of a media, you know, he needs something on his feed about him. I think he's just an egotistic maniac. He needs something about him on his feed every day. So he just says some random stuff to get a bit of um, traction. Come on, sucker. You can't do this. I'm that little bit of doubt on his shoulder. Um, and every time he looks in the mirror, he, he thinks, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs> Which all builds up fine for the storyline that is Fury White, God willingly. Number two, sold out. By far the biggest UK heavyweight clash since Frank Bruno versus Lennox Lewis in the 90s. Both protagonists were courteous with each other in the build-up. Please, I beg you. <laughs> Right, I'm going to definitely give him an opportunity. That's what the British people would like to see. Yes, yeah. very, and, very you, nice. yeah. and you know what? The fight itself lived up to expectations as this battle of Britain proved exactly why the heavyweight division has always been boxing's most prominent. This explains why almost 30 years later, Fury White has sold out Wembley in a flash. Despite the fact this event doesn't even include UK's biggest names in the sport. Dillian White might not be yet the draw, his other rival Anthony Joshua is currently. However, in recent years, the body snatcher has made quite a name for himself, selling out a 20,000 seated O2 arena arena in London as the headliner, as well as appearing on multiple UK pay-per-views, some of which did fairly good numbers. On the flip side, Tyson Fury has made or solidified his name stateside, being the first to stop five-year reigning world champion Deontay Wilder twice on his home turf, winning the WBC belt in the process, which up until February 22, 2020, was the only title missing in Tyson Fury's collection. The Dillian White fight will be Tyson Fury's first on UK soil since August 2018 when the Gypsy King fought in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Whereas Dillian White in recent memory has upped his profile on the UK scene specifically delivering some entertaining fights. So don't think for one minute Tyson Fury versus Dillian White has sold out just of Tyson Fury's name alone. Number three, 
Dillian White, live underdog. As spectacular as Tyson Fury looked in his last two fights against the bronze bomber Deontay Wilder, the Gypsy King still just beat one man, who as we all know has a powerful right hand, yet apart from heart or a warrior spirit, technically doesn't have much else in his arsenal considered exceptional. Dillian White on the other hand might look a bit ungainly at times, however is a more proficient and more complete fighter than Deontay Wilder. White's left hook, White's experience against solid opposition on a more consistent basis than the Gypsy King for at least the last seven years, and most importantly Dillian White's confidence. White rebuilt himself after his 2015 loss to Anthony Joshua and picked himself back up in his most recent defeat against Alexander Povetkin, righting his wrong in an immediate rematch. And I'm not scared to leave it all on the line. I'm not scared to take risks, you know what I mean? And I always come to fight. I enjoy fighting. I love my job and love what I'm doing. So I have nothing to lose and I will risk it all, you know, if need be, you know? Now it must be said, historically speaking, Tyson Fury has always showed up big time under the brightest lights, even on foreign soil. Fury out Klitschko Vladimir Klitschko in Germany back in November 2015, being his elusive self, which forced the then decade reigning world champion to play catch up as Vladimir just did not throw any punches for most of the fight. And Fury continued to travel, racking up wins when he rematched Deontay Wilder with a completely opposing style which attests to Tyson Fury's versatility. That said, Deontay Wilder and Vladimir Klitschko both did not possess an inside game when they fought Fury in their respective fights, which is exactly where Dillian White shines. For reference, watch White Parker and both White Chisora fights. Tyson Fury hasn't fought someone who can work on the inside as well as Dillian White, certainly not recently, and it'd be most interesting to see how Fury deals with his element. Now so far Dillian White has been stopped twice in his career so maybe White's punch resistance is not what it once was. Similarly though undefeated, Tyson Fury proved he can be hit as well. During the third fight in the Fury Wilder trilogy, Tyson Fury got careless in round four and was dropped twice by Deontay Wilder who after being dropped himself a round prior seemed to be gassed at the time of those two knockdowns. Point being, Tyson Fury is going up against the more ring savvy and overall better boxer than Deontay Wilder, who loves to fight toe to toe, has more tools than Wilder, a better ring IQ, and a lot less to lose, fighting for his first ever world title after waiting for the longest. Also take into consideration Tyson Fury's lifestyle outside of the ring, which hasn't been the most rigorous. The weight Fury has put on and then lost, regained and lost again over and over in the last few years certainly has had some impact on Fury's form recently. Not motivated properly against Dillian White, the Gypsy King may be in for a rude awakening against the Body Snatcher, which makes Fury White on April 23rd, 2022 an intriguing matchup. Number 4. Tyson Fury's Decline Tyson Fury does deserve his props for his wins over Deontay Wilder, employing a front foot heavy game plan, which as stated, can play into Dillian White's hands in this fight. However, the other part may be that Tyson Fury is not able to move around as elusively as he was against, for example, Vladimir Klitschko in 2015. The first Wilder fight saw Fury on the back foot, yet wasn't able to keep up that strategy for all 12 rounds. Now of course, at that time Fury came off a near 3 year layoff which surely played a part. However, one year later Tyson Fury clearly struggled against Otto All-In Wallin utilizing the same strategy as the Wilder 1 fight. Otto Wallin at that point in time had a KO ratio of just over 50% and so the 6 foot 5 Swedish southpaw was not known and has never been known for his punching power. Keep in mind Tyson Fury had a significant height and reach advantage over Otto Wallin and still Fury took significant damage in that fight. Against Dillian White, who is a fairly slow-footed heavyweight, Tyson Fury holds the same height and reach advantage. Can the Gypsy King move around for 12 rounds and outbox the body snatcher? As soon as I land uh, the Lancaster bomber on Dillian White, I think it's all over for him. I'm planning on inside six rounds, yeah that's quick for me. So if instead that is Fury's game plan, is that because he isn't physically able to be on the back foot for a potential 12 rounder? Don't get me wrong, if Tyson Fury uses the same strategy he used in his last two fights against Wilder, Fury White could be a barn burner. However, that would be at the risk of getting dropped, maybe even stopped in the process. So far Tyson Fury has gotten up every single time he had been floored, but that means Tyson Fury can be hit and hurt, which even his most recent fight proved. Again, Tyson Fury deserves his props for the way he beat Deontay Wilder in typical 
Kronk fashion under the influence of Javon Sugar Hill. Similarly, Dillian White deserves his props for fighting many dangerous opponents in the last half a decade, even though White still lacks a win at the elite level. Interestingly, Dillian White is currently trained by Xavier Miller and Harold Shadow Knight, who was involved with all-time great Lennox Lewis for 13 years, meaning Harold Knight was training Lewis alongside, you guessed it, Emmanuel Stewart. So Tyson Fury isn't the only one trained under the inspiration of the Detroit Kronk style. Dillian White is too, meaning an explosive knockout in Fury White is more than a possibility. Number five, heavyweight boxing. And with the rivalry between Tyson Fury and Dillian White, that war of words over the last few years, which has captured the British audience's imagination with the WBC Ring Magazine slash Lynn Neal heavyweight titles on the line at a sold out Wembley Stadium, Fury White has the makings of a modern day all out British heavyweight classic. Tyson Fury is the bigger man with a height and reach advantage, who is riding his momentum of being an undefeated fighter with arguably the most significant wins of all current heavyweights. Thus, Fury is widely regarded as the best heavyweight in the world right now. Fury has incredible stamina, an iron championship heart, and a track record of performing at his best when the stakes are the highest. There are some questions that will need answering though, since Fury's best wins against specifically Klitschko and Wilder in the rematch where Tyson Fury was the underdog going into both of those fights. Against Dillian White, however, Fury is considered the heavy favorite, pun intended, who has dealt with some weight issues over the last years and surely isn't as elusive as years gone by, meaning Tyson Fury can be hit and heard and though blessed with great ring IQ, fighting instinct, as well as possessing a variety of styles, from a physical point of view, Tyson Fury may not be able to do the things he marveled at in the past. If Fury is not motivated, as in the aforementioned fights, the Gypsy King may deal with some serious challenges as Fury is going up against a fighter who pretty much has got nothing to lose, has been angered by the WBC for being mistreated, who possesses weapons that can put a dent in Fury's armor, and who has a personal score to settle with the champion. That said, this will be Dillian White's biggest fight in his career to date as he has fought Anthony Joshua yet was a mere prospect at the time. Against Fury, the stakes will be much higher. So how will White deal with these circumstances? How will White cope with arguably the most skilled and complete boxer he's faced so far in his professional career? How is Dillian White's stamina? Because when the going gets tough, Tyson Fury has the bottle as he says and so White may get the chance to prove that he's got the bottle as well on the elite level. Will the body snatcher rise to the occasion. I think Fury vs. White is a 55-45 type fight, slightly favoring Tyson Fury, at least in my opinion. Yet I would urge fight fans not to rule Dillian White out just yet. Fury White has the ingredients for a heavyweight clash to remember, and we're just one month away, God willingly. We just had a kickoff press conference where Dillian White was absent. So what do you make of Fury White so far? And who do you got in this all-out British heavyweight clash? Let us know in the comments below. Now, I will do a Ringside Stories official unofficial prediction in my fight preview as the fight draws closer. If you're new to the channel, we make content about boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to Ringside Stories. Now, if you've done that already, you're awesome. We already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching. Watching and have a legendary day.